Start trading today at pukatrade.com. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the Vintage Super League. I'm Luis Scott Vargas, fresh and happy, ready to play my match in about, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Tom, unfortunately, has the uh, dreaded booth after a loss. <laughs> I wasn't so bad. I did not have high expectations going into this one. Uh, I actually played Storm all three times this week, and it's just a pretty bad matchup for me. Uh, I decided for once I'm going to beat Shops. I've never played a deck that's good in Shops in my life, and then I play in Storm three times. So I, yeah, I'm in I, for a rough couple weeks here. I think even if you lose to Kai next week, Going one and two is above expectation for your list against Storm, uh, which yeah, is, is not a, is not a knock on your list. In fact, if you and Bob switch lists, I'd be in trouble. I'm playing against Bob's mentor deck that has four main deck Cabal therapies and you know <laughs> just like a lot of anti Storm cards because where mentor is right now, you kind of have to choose your battles. It's just like it's just like a lot of different decks in vintage. Maybe Storm aside because Storm does the same thing against everyone, but. You you know you you picked anti shops and you ran into basically three copies of the same seventy five. <laughs> yeah, they think like two cards off each of them, maybe like a cyborg card too as well. So it's not a lot of variety for me over this trimester, and unfortunately, it's a bad matchup. You know, if I played, I think like the mentor list uh, or most of the decks I played actually have been pretty good against Storm uh, historically. Um, so this just kind of worked out poorly for me. I bobbed when they weaved and 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 I got uh, got got kind of crushed. Yeah, uh, and well, that's the way it ends up sometimes. Uh, <laughs> I've run this like really metagame workshop decks to try to beat other workshop decks, and I'm 0-2 against workshop so far. So, <laughs> I mean, you might get your matchups and not have it work out. Like, you, you did beat Ochoa last week. In, oh, yeah, I mean, I know. That was a very had... interesting match. I agree. You, you, know, yeah, like, you almost beat Chris this week. Or, like, at least you game two. Game yeah, two was very like, close. Game two, like, when he didn't kill me the tourney Necrod for a million, I figured I had to be, like, a pretty big favorite. Like, I have nine outs to probably just kill him right there. Um, and I actually was thinking, uh, it would be ironic if I drew Supreme Verdict, since I, I like tanked for a while between that and Balance. Uh, and then I obviously draw that, and I was like, man, which is Balance now? I think like Balance is like pretty terrible in the matchup, and it's Verdict's like, it's, it's, it's blue, and so often you just want to pitch it to Force Will anyway, that it's it's like a pretty big spew to be playing Balance over it, but obviously I wished I had Balance in that in there. It would have been pretty fun to balance him down to no cards and Necro lock him. <laughs> yeah, he would have been at two life with a Necropotence and play no cards in hand, which is not yeah. a high percentage... Uh, Situation though, yes, balance would have been better there. That does not prove balance is better than supreme verdict. Uh, though, oh, yeah, I mean, I think balance it is, is unfortunate, like, pretty bad. In fact, it's like a lot of the times you're going to be using it to kill the tokens, like they're spending their whole hand to do it, so they're down to no cards. So, if you go like land mox balance, like, again, so Joe last week, we have to go land mox balance, like we're both just playing off the top, and I think the storm deck's a lot better at doing that than my deck. Um, so I think in general, I'm going to rather have, have the, the blue card to pitch the force as well, and then also just be able to, like, I'll have time to cast the Supreme Verdict. I'm not going to die to the tokens before I get to four mana. So I think it's it's a lot better in the matchup. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think that logic makes sense. Pitching the force will, it, it, it sounds like a joke. A lot of people are like, well, at least it pitches force will, but it's actually very relevant. It's, it's super. Like, all my blue cards are so important that I I don't want to pitch my, my card draw to it. I don't have to, like, sandbag a, a preordain and not be able to make mentor tokens or anything. So it's like, so important that, that you... Um, you can you can pitch this kind of irrelevant card. So I think it's actually like a very big point in favor of Supreme Verdict in the matchup. Yeah. So uh, a as we saw in the pregame show, uh, Wormwood Gaming sent us a few deck boxes. I've heard you don't have yours yet. Mine is not. And hopefully it gets here tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> but it's not here quite yet. Well, l luckily uh, I I've got mine. So I guess I'll, I'll crack it open and uh, see what Lucky I got. Actually, I, I forgot what I ordered. So it's actually just a huge surprise. <laughs> That is quite the knife you're using there. Don't cut off your finger. <laughs> I figure it's more efficient that way. Actually, it's probably way less efficient. <laughs> way less efficient. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you do an unboxing? I don't, I don't actually know. Man, I wish my box was here now. I'm like pretty <laughs> jealous of this whole process. Yeah. All right, yes, I got the purple heart. So I got... Ooh, sweet. Peltogain, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got a, a pretty sweet deck box here. We've got uh, the Vintage Super League logo, as you can see, season four, and uh, yeah, this looks pretty sweet. It's got a, a lot of stuff going for it. I, I got to admit, uh, this is nicer than than a lot of deck boxes I have used in the past, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll get used to it. I think I think I'll be able to suffer through that. Yeah, I think it's like sweet for something like a you know like a commander deck or a Canadian Highlander or whatever the format is that Randy plays at GPs, which it seems like super fun. Um, so I'm going to use it for something like that, which will be uh, which will be cool. 
All right, and then uh, the chat's wondering if anyone else has like a machete or something even bigger to open the next Xbox. But I think I, <laughs> I, I think I probably have the lead for now. But I, you know that I gave other people time to go find a better implement. So, <laughs> and on that note, we're ready to go. Let's uh, go down to our match. Alrighty, welcome to round two of this week's Vintage Super League. We've got Rich Shea playing Hangerback Shops, though Hangerback uh, doesn't describe the whole deck. It's basically just aggro shops. Playing against Kai, who's playing Storm, and uh, unfortunately for Kai, he's on the draw here. Yeah, being on the draw is so bad in this matchup since it lets Rich get his first you know, Chalice effect or his first uh, you know, taxing effect down. Um, we can see I mean, Rich's hand actually not that great here, although Chalice would be pretty nice against Kai's hand. Rich's hand is on the low end of hands you can have, except it has Chalice in a workshop, and Chalice for zero is pretty good against really this good storm. storm. Yeah. And then the combination of Chalice, Tanglewire, and Smokestack, or sorry, Tanglewire and Wasteland, means that Rich can stop Kai from playing the fast mana, and then use Tanglewire and Wasteland to restrict him even further. Yep. I mean, here I think... We might actually see Kai vamp for a Dark Ritual just to try to reset hands. Potential. Oh, he has to be decent. Hmm. The, the, the dangerous part about that is it's that... It's so bad with that fast mana, though. He can't right, even recover from it. If Kai can't win next turn, giving Rich seven new cards means you're just going to face down two locks, lock pieces. Yeah, yeah, he can't do that. On the other hand, Kai can... He can actually vamp for Soul Ring if, if he wants. Huh. I should... I, that's, oh, this Tangle Wire, though, is going to make that line a lot worse. Uh, it's, it it's, he's not going to die during the, during the Tangle Wire effects so without time to draw out of it. The one thing Kai's got going for him is that Rich doesn't have a very fast clock. Unfortunately for Kai, if he does go with the Soul Ring line, then uh, Frexian Revoker gets him pretty well. Yep. Kai can also just get, like, an Ancestral if he wants. If he had a better hand, if Kai had... Let's say Kai did have, like, a Lotus in his hand, he could get a Hercules Recall and try to set that up. But the problem is Kai can Hercules here and still just not do anything. So Kai deciding what to vamp for here. He could just sack his his Bloodstained Miner. You don't want to end up with a tap Bloodstained Miner in play because of uh, the Wasteland, but he's got a... Kai has a main deck Swamp. Yeah, I'll pull up the deck list here so I can take a look at it. It looks remarkably similar to what I just played against. I cannot escape these Storm decks. They're everywhere. Um, oh, yeah. This is your next opponent, actually. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, uh, I, need, I really want Rich to beat Kai here so I can get a margin of error so when I lose to Kai, we'll be tied. The dance to avoid last place begins already. Oh, it's a big sweat. Especially, it's funny because th that's the great thing about BSL is for a while you're in the hunt for like, you know, top four and you're like, all right, I hope I make top four. Yeah. And, like then, and, then, and, then, and then you transition into the, I hope I don't get last. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've had very different VXL experiences in that I have started out the first week 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3, I think. 0, 3, maybe. I think I, 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 maybe I've gone 2, 1, one 2, twice. But well, yeah, my, my hunt for the top four does not usually last past the first week. If you don't count season three, which, as we can all agree, is not canon given how short it was and it was an abbreviated schedule. Uh, Wait, no, I did well that one. No, that one never counts. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we can agree that we're not counting season three. I haven't actually had more losses than wins at any point. So tonight, tonight I could I could actually end up two and three if I if I lose and be in that position. All right. So rooting against you is what you're telling me. <laughs> so Kai chooses not to vamp for anything. Well, therapy, not really what he wants here. Here's my guy. The problem with not vamping for anything is if you play Underground Sea now and Rich okay, wasteland it. wastelands it, you, I mean, you're, you're kind of put on the spot. I guess maybe Kai was thinking his draw step would give him more information on what to vamp for, but I, I don't know what his plan is out from here. He, maybe it, is, it is good for, that he didn't vamp for the Soul Ring. Revoker would have shut him down right quick. Is there any chance you blind therapy revoker here and then upkeep vamp for soul ring? Wow, just huh? main phase in this vampire tutor now. Why would you main phase this thing? No, that I don't. I don't get the advantage of that. You might as well see what Rich is up to. I mean, he's probably just assuming that Rich is going to wasteland, so he's saving time. 
Like well, I can Maybe. tell you, having done that a couple times, uh, I've been punished every time for a shortcutting like this. Something always happens that throw me off. Like, oh, I wish I hadn't shortcut like that. Oh yeah. But the appeal of F sixing is so there's so much value. I have to now that I'm playing workshops. I have to remind myself to to watch my floating mana because of the, oh, the right. updates to colorless mana means I've been passed before, which you know is ultimately you know for the greater good. We're getting a new mana system, but <laughs> there have been some growing pains. On the other hand, I love F six six, so I do it all the time. So oh yeah, I mean, well, what, what think I think to get here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was going to comment <laughs> that my my F sixing experience in VSL has not been the best. I've considered removing the key from my keyboard, but uh, they're just it's just too convenient. Uh, I have no idea to get here. I mean, Hercules is one thing, the, the, but like it doesn't even do that much. Hercules is Hercules might be the best choice. The problem with Hercules is you're going to get wastelanded next turn. You're going to get Tangle Ward. You're going to have to fade wasteland for another turn just to cast it. And upkeep Hercules with Kai's current hand doesn't do that yeah. much. It just puts a mox into play. Like I'd rather just get Dark Ritual if that's your plan. Efro uh, has a compelling theory, which is that. Kai uh, meant to cast Cabal Therapy and cast Vampiric Tutor instead. That makes way more sense, especially how long he's thinking here. He wouldn't cast me unless he knew what he's getting. So I, uh, I think that is a, a Kai, very Kai just thing. Kai just confirmed that, that that was in fact a misclick. <laughs> so Rich has to tap down probably the Ravager here because he has to lose one of his one of his mana sources, and he wants to use the Wasteland here. You probably, yeah, you probably just revoke her soul ring here in the dark, right? It seems like the best card to name. You could name like something like Necropotence, but Necro and Bargain are both so bad against uh, an aggro deck. Yeah. Hmm. So Kyra's well, cast down. Yeah, you don't need to wasteland when he's stuck under the tangle wire. We can find out what Rich's, he got. Assume Rich's, he... Rich's clock gets a lot faster now. Yeah, I assume Kai got Dark Ritual. I don't really know what else helps him. Well, he, he could get Hercules. If he gets Hercules, yeah. and then on upkeep, Hercules to get rid of a Chalice and just draws Lotus? Sure, but he has to draw a one-outer to do this. I mean, if you just get Dark Ritual, right? Like, you can just... You'll be able to cast Dark Ritual next turn with... Oh, he went, yeah, he got Hercules. If Rich didn't have that this, this Wasteland, I think... It would be things would be a lot easier for Kai. Well, I guess the Tangler is actually e almost equally problematic. So, all right, here comes Cabal Therapy. What Kai, what Rich meant, or what Kai meant to cast last turn? Let's see. Let's see what he ends up naming. And I wonder what he would have named last turn. Naming Hangerback Walker. Okay, interesting. He's, he said that's what he would have named last turn. He actually messaged me. So okay. He, he wanted to make sure not to die to like some sort of Ravager Hangerback combo. Yeah, that makes sense. Just trying to slow down the clock, give himself turn, time to, to, to get out of this. So if Rich draws any lock piece or wasteland, this game is very over. Uh, Tango doesn't really count, unfortunately. Uh, it, was, well, it does. It takes away the avenue. Like one thing Kai could have done was was Hercules draw a land, Mox Ruby, Wheel of Fortune, right, or Mox Ruby, Time Twister, um, uh, and get rid of all the permanents in play because it'll be back in Rich's hand. Now he won't have the mana to do that. Well, he he wouldn't anyway because he had to tap two. Oh, two. right, so yeah, he's still, two, still, still in two. Okay, yeah, never yeah. mind. That would not so R Rich is getting a little aggro here. He's probably going to sack the Tangler on two also, because it's not doing a whole lot. Yep. Basically putting Kai on, like, what is a two-turn clock here? He gets up to a 4-4 five, five, four, four Ravager. He attacks for 6 down to 10. The next turn he attacks for 10 if he sacks everything plus the Jite. Yep. Plus, you know, any artifact from Kai's perspective. So I think... I think Kai's going to be on upkeep, Hercules, recall you, and just hope to draw the card Black Lotus. It's not particularly great, but you're, you're dead to any artifact if you don't do that. And he, Rich only has four mana, so like, he, and he, so he's probably got this lead with Tangle Wire as well in this spot, since he's probably afraid of... That's true, actually. That you know, he, even if Kai doesn't win here... He still gets to play Ruby and then 
he's got three mana out, and Rich has to or, to play Tanglewire instead of playing a threat, and and yeah, that's actually, or maybe he plays Revoker. No, he still probably has to play Tanglewire. Yeah, maybe yeah. Kai is fine here, even if he doesn't die immediately. Also, Kai, I guess, knows that it's Trike Gita uh, waiting, so he knows he's dead next turn if he... If you pass Rich actually, yeah. Rich can't play Tanglewire, I think, right? Because if Rich plays Tanglewire, he's he's tangle locked himself for like two whole turns. And I think he needs to just put yeah. more pressure on the board. So he probably has to play out at least he has to replay Chalice and Zero play Tanglewire, he's only locked for one turn. And if he draws a land, he's not locked he can keep workshop up. Or maybe he won't wasteland here. Maybe he'll leave the wasteland in play. Yeah, no, you might as well leave the wasteland in play because yeah, he he ends up with a tapped yeah. underground sea regardless. Yeah, so now he actually can play Hercules Recall, or sorry, he'll be able to replay the Tangle Wire and just tap Chalice Tangle Wasteland and still have a workshop up. So he will get to begin redeploying threats. Defense grid probably the worst draw on the deck. Uh, yes, I think that might literally be the worst draw on the deck. I hope he does not draw that one against me next week. That's a good draw for Rich, I imagine. He just wants to get more mana. It is. Because now he can go Tango Wire Revoker. Yep. And if you're Rich, do you do you like running out the uh, Chalice for a number other than zero? Kai clearly would have played more zeros if he had them. Yeah, maybe instead of revoking the Moxer, he could have Chaliced on one. Mm -hmm. I don't think he needs to, though, here. I would just hold the... Okay. I like playing the Chalice to tap and Tango Wire, I guess. In fact, now maybe he's going to tap... Is so he making it lethal this turn? No. We'll get somebody can like animate a factory and maybe kill him. I don't think there is one. Um, no, especially that you have to tap down to the tangle wire. I I do think that uh, Rich's chalice for zero is the safest route because it stops Kai from just top decking Lotus and going Lotus draw seven. Yep. Well, and here we're gonna see a wasteland probably on one of these underground seas. I would imagine so. To lock him on, on, on being tapped out. So this, so now next turn, so Kai gets to ancestral. Finds dark uh, ritual, no, which is good, but no if, land. If Kai draws a land now, he can go land ritual. He still can't play lotus. He can, I mean, he can DT, but it's not doing a whole lot for him. Actually, Kamal Ritual. Kamal Ritual's good, too. So, is Kai dead next turn? He gets to take three, maybe five. No, I don't think Kai's nine. dead next turn. He's taking nine if, at most, right? If, if Rich draws a two-mana land and can play Trike, Kai's very dead, because Trike does oh, uh, right. a bunch of extra damage off Ravager. But otherwise, Kai gets an extra turn, and drawing Cabal Ritual is fantastic. Ooh, uh, well. loads of Elm's huge. Yeah, that'll, that'll end the game. If... If Rich didn't draw that and Kaiju a untapped black source, he would just go land, ritual, cabal, ritual, demonic tutor, Yagwa, and actually win. Yeah, he was, Rich had, he was Rich, winning. Rich had to draw the uh, lodestone gold in that turn. I mean, Kai wasn't a big favorite. He doesn't have very many lands in his deck, and all the zero drops don't count. But why did he need to draw a land? Tangor's only on two. Oh, right? Tangor's on two. Yeah, so Rich actually just had to top deck a. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of insane. And even actually. now, if. if is the taxing effect lethal if Kai draws a land? I probably I assume so. Just it makes this card so other. bad. Yeah. Yeah. He can't pay five that many times, or you know, pay an extra five over the course of the turn or whatever that low stone ends up being. Wow. So Rich actually had to draw a lock piece there or wasteland, either of those things, and and Kai would have ended up uh, winning that game. I'm actually going to sideboarding here. I mean, both players have pretty, pretty clear plans for this matchup. It's not an uncommon matchup. Rich with a bunch of mind break traps. Interesting. Okay. So he wants to be interactive on Kai's turns. I like that. Mind break trap also helps when you're on the draw. Sure. Look, look Rich has those instead of Leyline of Sanctity. I, I like both those cards. I, I think that Chops really wants a, a protection on the draw because they're so good on the play. That makes sense. So Kai clearly is going to side out the defense grids. Looks like he's going to side out get some Gitaxian probes as well as maybe some of the hand disruption. But he can't keep, take out all the hand disruption. Remember, we have deck lists. And Kai knows that Rich has uh, mind bag traps. So Kai can't just be like, all right, take out all my duresses. So 
Kai's bringing in four lands, ancient tomb, three ancient tombs on an island, and then the up to four Hercules recalls, and then an empty the Warrens. All the storm decks play this like ancient tomb plan against shops with lots of Hercules, but I don't I don't know how effective it is because we haven't seen storm beat yeah. shops yet. It involves taking so much damage too, and like they do present a clock to you. I mean, maybe you know, the theory is there that you only need one extra turn, so that the, the or maybe you need to have the ancient tomb twice. To, to, to break through the lock, but it's interesting. So, Kai gets to be on the play here. Oh. Well, good hand on the play, I think. Bad hand they on both the have great hand. R Rich's hand is insane he's got yes he's got it gets a lot hit. worse though when that when that black lotus gets to rest right yes but it's not completely worse because kai now has to worry about uh mind break trap sure uh, well he kai has a second dress in his hand for it so it depends here on kai's what he ponders into if he ponders into a land and well, he can my issue is that if kai duresses here and takes the lotus and then he sees the mind break trap if he plays the Mox, he can't then play Ponder, or Rich can just snap off the Mind Break Trap, if he wants to. Oh, true. And he kind of might not realize how dangerous... Yeah, Rich, I guess... Hmm. Do you snap it, off Mind Break on Ponder? I don't know. That's, that's tough. It's hard to know, you know, once you see hands... Part of the problem, I think Kai has to cast the Ponder anyway, even if he doesn't take Mind Break Trap here, because I Rich agree. is, without Lotus, Rich still just plays turn one Revoker on your Moxes, or turn one probably the Thorn of Amethyst. My assumption is that he takes Lotus, though, because if Kai draws, or if Rich draws any sort of mana source and can play two lock pieces on turn one, it's just so brutal. Also, the Lodestone Gong gives you no time to draw out of it. Yep. I mean, Rich's hand here is just fantastic against Kai. I think oh, yeah, you have to take Lotus here and hope to get lucky. Hope he just never draws another land. You're just never winning this game if he draws, if he gets the four mana on turn two. Yeah. It's... So... He took Thorn, interesting. So he's going to try to beat a first turn Lodestone. Oh, this is so strange to me. Isn't Lodestone just like a better version of Thorn here? Yes, but it does mean that Rich ends up down a card. Because he has to sack the Lotus to play it. Sure. So, all right. Well, this worked out pretty nicely for Kai. No, because he's this directly at my break trap now. Yeah. And then he's facing. He's he still has him. mana sources at least. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I don't know, I this thorn I, scares I, me a lot less with the recall in hand. Like I would have just taken I, the Lotus. I still think you cast a rest. Rich is going to mind break trap this. I assume there's no reason to give Kai the, the right the, the ability. I, I think if I was Rich, I would have been tempted to mind break the ponder just because Kai played so many cards already. Sure. All right. Well, Ravager, not a particularly exciting draw. You know the one advantage of what Kai did here is now when he hercules back the lodestone, can't Rich, it. Rich can't play a lock piece. True. So. And maybe that is that could be Kai's line here. I mean, if, if Rich had just drawn a Mox, there was ooh, that was a nice draw step. I like that line too. I like the draw ancestral line. God. That's what I I'm doing wrong. I think I don't draw ancestral off the top frequently. So, enough. even though Kai bricked on mana sources there, he had a saving spirit guide, which is half a mana source. He drew demonic. Uh, Tutor and Dark Petition to go with his Yogg Muscle. So now Kai has the gas to win the game, and he's going to presumably get to go end of turn. If he doesn't draw land still, Spirit Simeon Spirit yeah, Guide Hercules right. you. He needs Rich not to draw a Wasteland. Or he needs to just draw a land so he doesn't have to care about that. So what Kai really wants is just a land. Dark Petition not really not really doing it. Because what Kai can do is, is if Rich misses just one turn on Wasteland... Or a fourth land. Well, <laughs> oh man, Kai is not catching any breaks here. No. Oh, here if Rich goes for this lodestone golem, does that matter at all? No, because you can't. Hercules in response. The problem is, 
Kai can't, yeah, he can't Hercules in response, so he might as well Hercules in response, I think. How is he going to beat, win through one Lodestone Golem, though? Uh, if he does, if he doesn't Hercules in response, he takes seven down to eight, and then he has to, if he draws the land, Hercules before attacks, and then Rich replays oh, the right. So you're just yeah, in the exactly. exact same spot. All right, so presum presumably Kai is gonna is gonna Hercules response here. Rich has not drawn poorly this match. <laughs> no, I mean Kai has drawn. He's had multiple spots with you know a decent number of outs and just hasn't managed to hit. Yeah, it. had he, had he ancestraled into a land, you know he had to hit Spirit Guide, which actually counts just as much as a land here. But if he yep. if he had hit Spirit Guide, then he could. Or a land that he could let this resolve, then Hercules, and then win fairly easily. Yeah, maybe win easily. Yeah. Is there any thought? To, no. If he could, like demonic tutor for something in that spot, but like, I don't think so. He's at too low of a life total. Yeah, and as Efro says in the chat, there, uh, Kai can just go like, Hercules, you in response, untap. Cast demonic tutor if I if I brick, you know, paying three to get another Hercules and then hope to be to draw another land so I can Hercules again. Sure. Realistically, what's going to happen is is Rich is just going to draw a land, strip mine Kai, then play a Lotus Stone. <laughs> but I wonder. So if, if Kai had taken the 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 Lotus instead of the Thorn, then I mean, the clock would be a lot slower, right? I wonder if that would have made a difference yeah. here. All right, well, I think Kai makes pretty much his own play. So would Rich have been better off attacking first? Presumably he would have, right? Definitely. He, he would have been dealt still seven extra damage. Yeah, there's no reason not to attack first there. Uh, Kai keeps drawing black spells that aren't dark rituals. So now I guess I guess you get yeah, DT for Hercules. I mean, you could get Lotus, but you just can't go off in the face of Lodestone Golem. Not even close. Yeah, I think you have the DT for... Hercules. The problem is if you DT for Hercules, you know you're going to get at least... Like, Rich might just go strip Revoker next turn, knock you down to one mana. Oh, true, then you're just dead. Which means you can never cast Hercules. What else can you do? I mean, if you DT for Lotus, you can't even play the Lotus. Oh, you can't even. It's an artifact, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, then you play it, it, and then he revokes the Lotus. So that doesn't really help. This is not a good spot for Kai. I think that's what we're concluding here. No. No, it is not. So if you get Lotus and pass, so you don't get Revoker, next turn, Rich probably hits you to 10 and then goes Revoker Strip, because that takes away more mana? Though I guess you could also just play Lodestone. I think you play second that, Lodestone. Yeah, I don't see it here, because that puts you on a one-turn clock with two, two sphere effects in play. And then if you sack Lotus, next turn you'll have six mana. Let's assume, assume Rich just misses. You're already in that spot anyway, and just you have two. You're facing down two lodestone golems. You can lotus will lotus hercules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but then I mean, <laughs> by you're like, more turn. You're kind of spinning your wheels at that point, but certainly you cast a monarch tutor. You again. This is another turn where had Kai drawn like. A land like Ancient Tomb would have been, I assume, a pretty good draw here. Yeah, it's a good draw. Yeah, so what Kai has to hope is that Rich draws a card which makes Rich go off plan somehow. I'm not sure what card that could be, but yeah, I can't come up with anything. Like his deck is so streamlined. Like he either draws a land which lets him strip plus Lotus Golem, so you can't let him draw a land. He draws a cheaper lock piece. He just plays lock piece plus revoker. That's can't let him do that. Um, I guess he can't do that because then he since he missed that attack, he doesn't have lethal. Then so he actually has to play. He's kind of priced to play those so golems if he's presenting lethal. If you're rich, you might be able to predict the lotus here. Right. Oh, is Tanglewire a more appealing option? Because if you go strip Tanglewire. So. If you if you strip Tanglewire, Kai can't play Hercules on upkeep, but you only end up with one Lodestone in play. It's pretty hard to turn down just Lodestone Golem have two 
have yeah. been lethal in play with two sphere effects. I think you have to do that. Had he not missed that one attack, he could just play Tango White here and strip and just the game would be over. But I think here he just needs to play second load stone and I mean, what's the worst case scenario, right? Like Kai goes Lotus into Hercules. With Lotus Hercules is, is not even a disaster. For not even bad. You just replay a Lotus Stone. I mean, it, it's bad in that sense that your clock is reset. And you're not presenting lethal. Yeah, but even if your clock's reset, Kai keeps like losing resources. Like he had to use right. the Spirit Guide for the first circles. He has to use the Lotus for this one. Like he ends up in a spot where he can't do much. I guess Rish has to worry about stuff like Ancient Tomb and Hercules as well. So Rich, it's funny, Rich has a couple different lines here. He can go like Revoker Strip Mine, he can go Tangleware Strip Mine, he can just go Tangleware Go, he can go Lodestone. I think they all basically win him the game. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Kai top decks. Yeah, I mean this shop stack is too good. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty great. I think this it's format those... actually is just Storm against Shop is the only tier yeah. one decks. Yeah, I mean we were talking about this the other day over over G Chat, right? I think those are the only yeah. playable decks. Everything else is just like decisively worse. Like I think the mentor is basically unplayable yeah. in all uh, forms. I, I I don't know if I, I would I would say it's unplayable, but I think if you're looking at like which decks give you the best chance to do well. Sure. Shop, yes. Shop, yes. Shops and and Storm are a decent percentage ahead of everything else. Everything like it's hard to justify playing another deck. Dredge might be an exception to that, but I think I think you can certainly defend playing Dredge. But like, yeah. like it's like meant like basically like I play Mentor because like I like you know the, the illusion of like playing games of Magic. But like you're not actually ahead against any deck. No. Right. Like you're like it's it's like the classic like. Uh, rock and extended problem where you're 45 55 against everything so you feel like you're playing a lot of magic because you're always like, kind of in games but you start every game down and I'm pretty convinced that like all versions of mentor are, are in that in that camp um, like decisively so it's probably more than just five percent down I think you're actually a significant dog against basically everything that's competitive I think you can do what you and Bob did this week which is focus a ton of energy on beating one deck so that sure. you're like a, fa a favorite against that deck but I think you know your matchup against Storm is fairly bad, and I, I think I, I'm not even convinced I against... beat shops. To be honest, I haven't actually got to play against it. Like I brewed this up, yeah. think, oh, I want to play a, a version of 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 mentor that beats shops, but like it would not shock me if I'm still just an underdog. And also, there's different versions of shops. Like I've been playing your Uba stacks list, and I'm sure it's not originally yours. It's you know from the no. uh, the world, but Uba whoa, whoa, actually whoa, is a draw whoa. step. That's, That's a draw step. Hold on, game on. All right, I we got to one out of them. <laughs> We, we got to get our thinking caps on now. It's pretty brutal. Kai has to think a lot now instead of just conceding. Uh, so now, can Kai win? Can he go Lotus, Lotus Academy. Academy, Will for five mana. So tap Academy for three, cast Will, cast Hercules. Uh, and, and it's obviously sack Lotus in, in between there. So Yeah. Cast Will, cast Hercules. I think Kai wins now. <laughs> yeah, you do. I think uh, he went out of them. <laughs> that, that's kind of insane. So... So you tap Academy for three mana, then you sack Lotus, you cast Will, you have one mana floating, right? Uh, I wonder if, if he's winning now, if it was Ancient Tomb also enough? No, I don't know if he's winning, actually. Hold on. You tap three, six, cast Will, have one floating. Uh, replay did you Lotus. Need? Replay Lotus. Cast Hercules with three floating. Cast Hercules with three floating. And then you can DT. Uh, but it's actually not quite enough to do anything, unfortunately. Then you ancestral you can, and you, you hope to, you ancestral and hope to hit like a ritual or something. So and if you brick, you get to DT again. Yeah, and if you brick, you can still just DT for another Hercules. Though you're actually not really in a position to cast it against Strip Mine. Depends. I mean, you can just ancestral into some more like mana sources, right? Like it depends on what happens there. Is there a better line now? Let's see. It's got to be tap Lotus sack, tap sack Lotus, will. Hercules, because you just, you have to cast Hercules first because it taxes you on every single spell you cast. Right. And then you have, I mean, you replay Lotus and use that to cast Hercules. You could technically, if you wanted to, just Hercules and leave an uncracked Lotus in play. And then you have Academy, two Moxes, Lotus, Underground in play, but then Kai... Uh, you know he's Rich a Voker. 
Yeah, he goes revoke or Lotus strip your strip your academy. And puts you back down to three mana with just two dark conditions and a vampiric in hand. So then you would vampiric for like a ritual and get to go ritual petition, but you don't have Yoggle to go get anymore. No. So I don't think you can win from that position. Well, Rich is at twelve. You don't need it, that much storm to kill him. Kai's ve- Kai is very close to winning, but he just needed like one more ritual in his graveyard. He, if he gets lucky in his ancestral, he's definitely gonna win. Yeah, I'm not even sure how lucky he needs to get. It might just be one ritual. Uh, I don't know if that's quite enough because he gets to ritual. No, he he only has four mana after that, so he he is not quite there. Because he goes like Lotus Hercules ancestral. Oh right, right. right. He's tapping one. Yeah, he's tapping one for the. So he need to get like ritual plus tendrils. Yeah. But that's better than his, before his draw step. Before his draw step, we thought it was like a zero percent, which uh, clearly Wait, we, we, were, we were just opining on the, the state of vintage as a format. We had moved on from this match. <laughs> and so now, well, he can vamp before he ancestrals. I don't know if that. I don't think that does much. I don't think it does anything. I think he needs to draw multiple perfect before he drew. <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. So well, I guess Kai, Kai has has gotten rich back here in spades. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> and vintage Super League, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> vintage, right? Vintage, ladies and gentlemen. This is just a. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> you went from being completely, and completely, completely dead to. Just... Kai didn't have to. Kai didn't have to vamp that game. He had to vamp like three times. He literally needed to hit Tolerian Academy, Dark yeah. Ritual Tentacles in four draw steps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've all been there. This is that's what my game three against Detroit last week felt like. I feel like I finally ran like equivalently. Kai, you know, that was Kai, a, that was Kai is currently the leader in the top deck uh, count for for this particular season, at least. You know it, that game was probably the luckiest game that we've seen in terms of Kai's win percentage before yeah. his draw step, and then his win percentage after his draw step still very bad. His win percentage before his ancestral, you know, is, is at that point still quite low, and then obviously all of a sudden, whoop, a right, up, yeah. right up to 100 right after that ancestral resolves. The brutal part is Kai's just going to lose this game on the draw, but still, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It just drags it out a little bit longer. Hey, you know, more vintage. <laughs> hey, you know, Rich might actually have to mulligan. It, it hasn't happened yet in any of the seasons, but he might have to mulligan, and in which case that Kai could actually get into the game. I forgot. I mean, I can complain about that too. I mulligan both games against Chris. Did you? Did you watch my openers? <laughs> I just have the image of you thinking, like, "Oh crap! I left some complaint equity on the table." I did. I, it, I, it, I, it, I, it, I, it, I better, better go grab that. <laughs> gotta, gotta pick it up. Yep, Rich's hand is great. Uh, good. It's hand fine. Good. You, I, I, you definitely keep it because you get to play turn one sphere, turn two sphere with double wasteland. But yeah. if you don't draw a workshop, then you could end up in a position of not casting much. Kai obviously has to bowl again this. Yeah. Rich may be considering whether he keeps his hand too, but I, I don't think you can bowl in this. You can bowl in that hand. On Especially the play. since Revoker is also yeah, good. Know, considered a lock piece. And Kai is dead. Kai has, Kai has to keep that, but he's not going to win. He has to draw, like, Ancient Tomb. Alright, Kai saw a Mox during Scribe. Do you keep Mox on top with this hand? Yes. Yeah. It depends on which Mox, but I think, I think you keep any one of them. Yeah, I agree. But just the fact that they play around exactly this position, where you draw, if you draw Mox, you get to go Delta, get a basic, play a Mox, go. No, so, uh, unfortunate uncolor box. It's operating here getting the swamp now leaves him without. Yeah, you have to get swamp. Yeah. Do you get though? Maybe you get island. You have ritual. Yeah, mm-hmm. you probably have to just get uh, swamp. I think it's just Offer. too risky not to get swamp. Sure. Cause, yeah, you're balancing against strip. So now, but, if you're rich, do you play sphere or do you play revoker? I would, since I drew a land, I would play. Uh, I, I agree that drawing the revoker. Land I, I think that I think that I would play Sphere because I do the land and I can still play Revoker next turn. That's what I'm thinking. I, mean, I guess the, the clock doesn't really matter. Like, an extra two, not a huge so, deal. Kai can Dark Ritual here, but it won't accomplish anything because there's two Spheres in play. If there, it's just good. Oh, I like I like the, the the fact that if you play Sphere, you're now immune to duress as well. 
Yeah. Which is pretty relevant because here we're going to think we're going to see Kai cast Duras and just whiff. And he deserves to whiff for playing that hideous Duras. So. Oh, yeah. This is you, know, you, know, you know, with people's VSL accounts, they can just make any Any art. Oh, yeah. They, they, have, they don't have to play all this art. Kai's playing the worst version of each card he's playing. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, strip, is... mine, strip mine is not weak. Yeah, Rich is very far ahead here. I mean, look at this. This this was like a medium hand from Shops, and he's yeah. crushing Kai. Grant and Kai Mulligan, too, also like not the most exciting hand. So A pretty bad hand. Yeah. Basically, for Kai to win here, he needs to do what he did last game over the course of a number of, you know, of, of many turns. Not It's not super fast, but the fact that Kai's on essentially zero, zero permanence in play with... Yeah. Uh, a two-point clock, and then maybe a Triskelion at some point. Yeah, I guess this hand on the play against Storm was not medium. It, it, it did have uh, very good. All, all the tools it needed. Yeah, I think that hand is very good from Rich. Yeah. So uh, uh, Let's talk about other things. We can move on. So, uh, barbecuing anything good recently? <laughs> Well, you know, if Rich can't cast any more spells, Kai is on like an eight-turn clock here. There, there conceivably are ways to get out of this. See that? That's kind of one of them. Black Lotus. Yep. Well, the the, the third clock thorn. Just got third thorn and clock doubled. Yeah, so that's, that's a bad a bad combo for Kai. All right, there we go. Well, that amazing sequence of top decks was for not. Unfortunately, as we predicted, uh, Kai. Did get himself out of an impossible situation. Couldn't do it twice. So yeah, just more pain for Kai. Dragged it out a little bit extra. Kai goes to one and four. Rich goes to four and one. So that was that was one of our bigger swings of the night. You know, we had the personal personal with one of the two best records versus personal with one of the worst records. So, but we're all still pretty close together. We're we're, we're going to separate a little more tonight. I mean, now you know now the four ones and the three twos are a little further away from the one fours and two threes. But Got a bunch of two twos, including our next match. So that'll be uh, myself against Bob Maher. So we'll be back in Good a couple that, minutes. Luis, and uh, yeah. have fun. Well, I'll be on the workshop side this time. So we'll be back in a few.